So what exactly is digital fashion and why has everyone been talking about it this year? Stay tuned because in this video, we're exploring the world of digital fashion, including some examples you should definitely know about, as well as my predictions for the future of where this brave new world of digital fashion tech is headed. For videos exploring the future of fashion, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I release new content. What's up, I'm Amanda Costco and you're watching Electric Runway where fashion meets technology. I'm a journalist and entrepreneur focused on how technology is transforming the $2.4 trillion fashion industry around the world. I've reported from every stage of the fashion supply chain from garment factories in Bangladesh to front row in New York Fashion Week. So without further ado, let's get into today's video, which is all about defining digital fashion. So digital fashion or virtual fashion is essentially clothing that doesn't exist in the traditional sense. It's not made of fabric, it's made of pixels. Now, fashion design softwares like Clothe3D have been around for years, helping fashion designers bring their creative visions to life. This isn't exactly new. What's new is that tools such as these are being used to create a new asset class of items that exist in the virtual world and not necessarily in the physical one. If you want to learn more about virtual goods in general, I invite you to check out this video, which I made about a year and a half ago. But this video today is specifically about fashion assets that are sold as goods to be enjoyed digitally. So how does it work? Digital fashion can be digitally tailored onto an image of yourself to share on social media or downloaded by our avatar to wear as a skin in gaming. It can be sold as an NFT or non-fungible token. Digital fashion can also be used as an augmented reality filter or layer, which we'll get into in a bit. First, I think it's important to talk about the digital fashion examples that have really paved the way for the future of this emerging niche. We can't talk about digital fashion without talking about the iridescence dress. Created by digital design house The Fabricant in May of 2019, Iridescence was a first of its kind digital dress that was sold on the blockchain at an auction for $9,500 US. It was first modeled by artist Johanna Jaskowa. This was a landmark moment in digital fashion because it was the first time a digital dress had fetched such a price tag. And it was being talked about as a kind of digital couture because the process of wearing the dress involved photoshopping it onto a picture of the owner in post-production. If you want to learn more about The Fabricant and hear from one of its founders, Carrie Murphy, I do invite you to check out one of the latest episodes of the Electric Runway podcast, which I'll link here. The second example is the Tesla Cyber Sneakers from Artifact. These sneakers were inspired by the Tesla Cybertruck, and they became famous when they were photoshopped onto a picture of Elon Musk at the Met Gala. The photo circulated on social media with more than 50 million views. Many people thought the sneakers were real and were asking where they could get a pair. Although they were digital, they were sold as an NFT on Super Rare, a digital art market that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. This was the first time that people were so hyped about a pair of digital sneakers that it created demand in real life, which is why I think it's worth mentioning here. Another landmark in digital fashion was Hanifa's Pink Label Congo Collection. This was a runway show that took place entirely online and consisted of 3D rendered clothing walking down the runway in a ghost-like fashion. This was, of course, at the height of the coronavirus pandemic when many runway shows and fashion weeks around the world were being canceled. Designer Anifa Mavemba made headlines with this show that received hundreds of thousands of views and a ton of media attention from around the world. Now, this was the show that really opened up a lot of people's eyes in terms of what a fashion presentation could be in light of digital tools and technology. It even caused many in the industry to start talking about what a fashion supply chain could look like if designs were rendered in 3D, showed to audiences and consumers, have them perhaps vote on which items they would buy in real life and then perhaps manufacture later as a physical product. Now, of course, this is not meant to be an exhaustive list of all of the digital fashion items that ever existed. So if I miss your favorite example, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. We'll start a conversation down there. So now you might be asking, OK, Amanda, but what is the purpose of digital fashion? I'm going to give you four use cases. 
At a very basic level, it's fun. Digital fashion is fun. It's a fun way to express your digital self. Digital fashion allows users to try out different styles without the environmental impact or cost. In games like Animal Crossing and in virtual meeting spaces like Altspace VR, you can play around with dressing your avatar so you have a personalized look in digital space or in what we're beginning to call the metaverse. Digital fashion can also be collectibles sold as limited edition items. My favorite example of this was in Roblox when a digital Gucci handbag actually sold for more than the real thing. In case you missed the details of this, in a recent brand activation, the Italian luxury company Gucci created a high fidelity environment inside the online game Roblox. Players were invited to explore the garden and its themed rooms for 14 days, as well as purchase digital assets. In May of 2021, a digital rendition of Gucci's Dinosaurus bag sold for 350,000 Robux, which equals roughly $4,115 on Club Penguin, an adjacent gaming site to Roblox. Now, real versions of the bag typically retail for around 3,400. The third use case for digital fashion is as an NFT or non-fungible token. Recently, Italian luxury fashion house Dolce & Gabbana auctioned off a digital collection, which sold for nearly the equivalent of $6 million. The transaction signaled that luxury will definitely be a part of the metaverse. What's interesting too, is that these asset holders in this case, don't just get the digital items, they also get access to the D&G Couture shows. So in this way, the NFT acts as a kind of ticket or access to a decentralized community, much like the Board Ape Yacht Club. The fourth and most exciting use case for digital fashion, in my opinion, is augmented reality. As much as some people may want to acquire digital fashion as a collector's item, most people will want to wear their digital fashion, and this is where AR can play an important role. In a way, augmented reality gives context to digital fashion assets such as NFTs and enables users to enjoy wearing the items they've purchased. And I should also mention that none of these technologies are mutually exclusive, so it's possible that there is a digital fashion item you bought as an NFT on the blockchain that you access via an augmented reality filter and then capture and share on social media. So how can you get started with digital fashion? The exciting thing is, is that you don't have to purchase anything to start wearing digital fashion and playing in this space. If you have a Bitmoji or Snapchat or a Facebook account, you can experiment with dressing your avatar. Snap has partnered with several brands on this front, most notably Ralph Lauren and Nike. DressX is an app that lets you try on digital fashion in augmented reality in real time on your live video. The app is powered by Snapchat and features a number of looks that are updated and curated by the DressX community. So where is digital fashion heading in the future? I have three predictions to share with you. The first is that digital fashion will eventually become an important part of e-commerce. As we've already seen happen in the beauty industry, users will be able to try on items in real time on their live video of their mobile phones or even on their smart glasses to visualize what an item will look like. This is already happening to a certain extent, but the technology is not exactly there yet. It's not at a place where it can make an accurate prediction in terms of size. What's working right now is when customers can place a 3D version of an item in their environment in augmented reality to inspect the details as we saw Burberry do. I also imagine that we're gonna see a future of fashion that is increasingly digital, that's both physical and digital. For example, augmented reality enabled physical garments that use image recognition to trigger AR experiences, such as this example by Marks and Spencer. This is just an early version, but imagine how enriched this can be when we're all wearing AR glasses. And remember, the experience that's being triggered doesn't necessarily have to be centered around augmented reality. I've been working with a company called Blue Byte for a long time now, and they actually use NFC and QR to trigger digital experiences that bring physical products to life. And my final prediction and something that this whole video has been alluding to is that digital only products will continue to develop as an asset class in and of themselves. I can see a future where we pay real money to purchase skins or outfits to wear in virtual or augmented reality outside the context of gaming. Maybe it's a beautiful digital dress or filter that you wear on Zoom or within photos on social media. We're gonna see lots of experimentation and play in this space where creators who might not have any traditional fashion design experience are going to be selling digital garments for others to wear and enjoy in the metaverse. 
Now, if you want to stay on top of all of the latest trends at the intersection of fashion and technology, I invite you to subscribe to the Electric Runway newsletter. I'll put the link down below. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of the digital fashion landscape. If it did, please click that like button and consider subscribing. Again, my name is Amanda Costco. Thanks so much for tuning in.